let's uh, give it up a bigger round of applause and welcome our next speaker for today is Mr. Rajiv. The stage is all yours and we are so eager and happy to hear your raw story for today. I'm going to make this really short. I'm going to go, not go into too much of details into everything. But first, I really want to thank Bala and the team Half Brick for having me here. It's such an honor to be here because what I really believe is everybody has things to contribute to the society and everybody has values that everybody can, others can take away from. And we all grow through collective intelligence and uh, empathy. So Half Brick really the, the lobby chat that I had with Bala for 10 minutes, I think, really transformed the way I think and I, uh, the way I look at society, and that's, that's why I'm here. So just to set clear expectations and context, so I've not, I'm not a person who's done a lot in life. I've just started my journey towards achieving something that I believe is meaningful for the society. So my journey started, so I, I, I want to split this into three parts, right? So first part is the context, why this is important and what we are doing here and why I am what I am today. And that starts with obviously my upbringing and my background. So the first part of my talk, I'm going to be talking about how you come across, you cross the chasm of middle class. Okay. So my parents, my dad was from a small village called Devagotai. He was born there and lost his father when he was 16 months old has never seen his father, doesn't recognize him. So from there, he was always, my grandma was 16 years old, no education, nothing, so single mom. With the help of family, with the help of the villagers, with the help of my uh, father's side family, he literally grew up. And until he was 20, he, has, he was always in a Tamil medium school, college, etc. And then he had to move to the city to find a footing for himself. So coming from such a background, my father, uh, literally so many people have helped my father to become who he was. So what he literally made his life's mission was to make people around him happy. So the amount of gifts that he had given in his life really transformed me. And that is number one that I wanted to emphasize is always when people, you are young, right? Small, small things you will overlook for people who contribute to you. So for example, he lived in my dad's sister's house for a long time when he was doing a CA. Right? And he was not a sharp kid. He, when coming from Tamil medium, finishing his college, and then you have to go do your charter accountancy, you know the kind of hurdles that you will face. People will not look at you with respect. You have to find your way out. And coming from a small village to a town like uh, uh, a city like Chennai, you will be obviously have so much insecurities about yourself. So my dad didn't clear his CA in the first term. He took about five attempts. But there, there were so many people helped him patiently to come across that chasm. And he literally, until he lived, help them all throughout this life. So always look around for people who are, uh, who are around you, give you the opportunity to grow as number one priority in your life and don't ignore anybody that who have helped you at some point of time because it will all come back to you later. My mom was from another village called Trivanekaval. Large family, very little income. So she has taught a lot of values in me about how to be conservative, right? So when you have 10 rupees, you have to plan for only 6 rupees. That 4, you don't know when you will need. So that's how every single element in the household is planned throughout my childhood. So it really brought me to a place where I don't know what risk is at all. I've always lived with what we got, small places, good friends, and my childhood was amazing. I never knew about all these struggles. The point when I grew up, I realized that my childhood has been a dream for me because all the troubles has been taken by my parents. So at the time I realized that, okay, I'm at a place where I have to give it back. My dad passed away, cancer, six months from a great human to nothing. I saw that whole journey. So in this part, the roots of who contributed to, to the, your early life really defines who you are. The exposure you have in your early life defines who you are. And for me, the exposure was only my family limited resources, always operate within that, there is no risk and stuff. But you can always create a lot of happiness there. When my dad passed away, the only thing that really hit me hard was, okay, fine, I have not done anything for him. But this disease that came and hit him, this is something bigger than all of us. In six months, a guy who was so healthy, who was so happy, made 100 people happy around him, is no more. And we had no clue. So that day I decided, I'm going to start thinking bigger. Okay, if we have to live and get out of this life, make an impact. And how can I make an impact? I really thought through. I didn't, I didn't know. I had nothing. I had no knowledge. 
the only thing I knew was playing cricket, studying, and I was a very average student. So in that time, it hit me, okay, I have to do something, but who am I? Do I have an identity? Do I have the resources? Do I have the ability? Nothing. So when I thought through, again, I, I want to take a leaf out of what Swati said, you have to convert pain into transformation. So that pain, I started thinking I should create an impact and I started creating a plan. If I have to, and what is that plan, right? I want to touch a million lives. I just, I was reading this book called Unposted Letter. I don't know if many of you have read it, but it's a letter by T.T. Rangarajan. And what it really showed was valuing small things in life are more important. And you have, to, when you pick a purpose that is bigger than you, you will always find a path to work towards that. So for me, I decided what is my purpose? I wanted to search for that. So what is the deeper meaning? So when I went through, I harped upon this concepts of if you choose something bigger than you, you will work towards it. And, and for me, I just, sometimes it struck me that, okay, I should touch a million lives. And how can I touch a million lives? I need to have a plan around it. So the first thing that thought to me was, okay, then I have to become, I have to have an identity for myself. I have to rally resources behind me to get there. So I started studying. So the, until this time, right, in my whole career, I was a software engineer working in a software company. And one day when I got out of the railway station to go to my office, I saw one and a half kilometer, it was raining. So about one kilometer, I just could see only umbrellas. And I felt like, okay, I'm a small fish in this big ocean. Do I want to be there? Can I, I should come out of it immediately. So I started studying really hard. So you, when people are doing 12 hours, 14 hours, I used to do 18 hours of work. So college, uh, like work plus studies and stuff, I started writing, thinking about where do I go next? I wanted to get an elite degree from a good college that will help me go to my next place. I started studying for GMAT and wanted to go into ISB. That was my dream. But when you don't have guidance, when you are just on your own and trying to do stuff, you will always find hurdles, right? So I, I got a decent score in my GMAT, tried ISB, didn't get it. So the condition was, you are an Indian IT male. 95% of applicants are Indian IT male. There's nothing standing out for you. So you have to do something better for, you to, for us to even consider you. So used an opportunity to go to the UK, went there, started working in a bank where uh, we were one of the first outsourcing partners. When you go there, again, simple. I am a guy with about three years experience. I am replacing a guy with 25 years experience, a Brit who was born there and worked there all his life. So the kind of resistance you feel to go in and do the work itself is insane. So I sat there and those guys are coming and asking me, you are an illegal immigrant in this country. So I'm not gonna talk to you. If you want to replace my job, do whatever you can by yourself. And also imagine this, IT outsourcing, at UK at that time was very new, and this bank is doing it for the first time. So we cannot go and say that I will put more, we can't add more resources. You do not get any support, and you do not get paid enough also to spend a lot of money to learn new things to go and do this. So you are literally on your own, and if I fail, I am failing my whole project, which is about 10, 12 people, and it's a lot of revenue. So every day, eight to five, I work with my colleagues, trying to understand whatever they do just by shadowing. When they all go home, I come back from at, to the office at 8, work till 3 a.m., 4 a.m. at the same place to reverse engineer whatever was available. So when you hit a hurdle, there are only two options, right? You accept that this is my fate, I can do this. Or you try to reverse engineer and figure out where you want to go. And that choice is completely yours. You are a sum of all your choices. I made a choice that I'm going to make this work. And we worked that hard to get that done. And we were successful and the project went on and I got an identity for myself that I could transform struggles into different journeys for not just for me, but for the people around me as well. So having that experience, I came back to India, applied for ISB, got into ISB, finished my MBA, and then wanted to, went into consulting. It is a lot of money in consulting that you can make. And I thought, okay, this is gonna power my journey of touching a million lives. So I started working and made a decent amount of money, but then realized something was missing, right? If, I, if, I'm, if I'm working at a certain pace, at a certain scale, and the kind of impact I want to create, there is still a mismatch. I, I just couldn't make it. But my middle class mentality will always tell you that you should not jump without a parachute. You cannot take decisions that are harsh to say, okay, I'll leave everything out. I'll go back, start from scratch. From tomorrow, I can be zero, because I got married at 23. 
I already had two children. So that time when you go in, you, you cannot start thinking about yourself, right? You have to think about four people at once. So you, I couldn't take the kind of decision that I wanted to take. So then the next best thing that I could do was go back to a job where I can really get the skills that will help me achieve my goal. So I came back to India from the UK and started working for a company called Freshworks. How many of you here know Freshworks here? Okay. I think Freshworks really transformed me as a person and as a career and the CEO Girish is my, one of my biggest inspirations, right? So he taught me how to build something from India to the world. How to put, so here we are talking about coming from small towns to uh, a town and establishing ourselves. He proved that you can be from a town in India, a small t in Chennai, to compete against the world's best companies in the world and setting up operations here. So for me, that journey of, I spent six years in Freshworks. I didn't mean to spend more than two years in any company that I worked with, but six years in Freshworks really taught me that as, as a person, as an Indian, as a product company, you'll be able to change the world. And you can also create not just wealth for yourself, but for at least 1,000 people around you. So that really motivated me to start. After six years, we went to IPO. We listed in NASDAQ last year. I decided that, that is when I wanted to start my own journey in entrepreneurship. So now I run a company called Spendflow. What we do is we help companies globally reduce their spends on software. And being an entrepreneur journey is also not very easy. It's been very, very difficult and stressful given that, uh, uh, given the, again, the family background, I don't have anybody uh, guiding me from family side. Nobody is into business, etc. So you find mentors, you find good people to carry on the journey. But today, we are one of the fastest growing companies in India. And we will, at some point of time, become one of the best SaaS companies in the world as well. That much knowledge, courage, and the ability to do this came from my journey at Freshworks. So the biggest takeaway that I want to give you all is, you have to be three things for you to be successful. One, always be curious. That is the ABC to be successful. You look at everything around you and always find out opportunities where you can learn. The minute you're learning jobs, get out from that job that you're doing. The minute you're learning, stop, stop doing whatever you're doing there and try to do something new because that is when your new journeys will become. Second, Always be human. Nobody can win alone. It's, it's impossible. You will look at look around you, look at your life so far, find out people who have helped you, and find out people who inspire you. I think uh, I loved what CK sir spoke about today morning. Don't go after fake heroes. Go after people who have really made an impact, who really are creators, who really can shape your career. Follow them and go with them. And the most important thing is always be empathetic. And always... Try to create impact. Each one of you, I think if you have something that you want to achieve, first break it down into smaller pieces. Do not get bogged down by saying, oh, like, uh, I think what Meena sir said was right, right? If you want to become a collector, you cannot start thinking being a collector is so difficult. Being a collector needs four steps to do. And that four, start with the first step and keep that movement on. If you start taking your first step towards that, I'm pretty sure all of us will be successful. And each of you have something, do the deep search in you on what is that impact you want to create. Do not try to emulate others, do not try to go after fake things, right? You will have something where you will be able to create an impact on. And you will have some skills that you yourself are overlooking right now. Look inside, do the deep search. Sometimes it, you might discover it through pain. Sometimes you might actually discover it when you are uh, on yourself, right? But do that search and change that search into an impact that you can create for the overall society. Again, thank you all for your time and uh, thanks Bala and team for the opportunity. Well, thank you Rajiv for sharing uh, such insightful you know, views and uh, your inspiring story with all of us and uh, I'm sure it would be helped you know, for all of you to you know, motivate yourself and it was truly a uh, raw story and you are an unavoidable and you were really amazing with your story and this world is again incomplete without you. Let's value everyone, let's recognize everyone and let's celebrate everyone.